Quakers have always asked really big picture questions. Be I think it's because of that belief of that of God in every person and the idea that there is a way of, of thinking about what would the kingdom of God look like here on earth, that, that we wrestle with that question. And that requires us to think about, about what's happening around us and kind of apply our faith values, look for where that of God is, um, is present and where it's being blocked. That's just part of our work as Quakers, I think. And I would definitely say that our current economic system is blocking the kingdom of God. In, in all possible ways. My name is Pamela Haynes. I live in Philadelphia and my meeting is here in Central Philadelphia Monthly Meeting. John Woolman is the person that I go back to again and again when thinking about economics, a Quaker from the 17 late 1700s, who just thought hard about his relationship to the world around him. So John Woolman says, dig deep, carefully cast forth the loose matter and get down to the rock, the sure foundation, and there hearken to the divine voice, which gives a clear and certain sound. Well, you know that what he said about getting to the root? That seems critical. It seems critical. And as I look at the world around me, so I'm called to engage with the world around me as a Quaker, right? And as I look at the world around me, I keep looking for the roots. And you see a lot of things that are wrong. You go looking for the roots, looking for the roots, you get to the economic system. Looking for the roots in the economic system, you get to the money. It feels like if I'm going, if I'm digging deep and casting out all that loose material and trying to get down to the foundation in, in society, it has to be the economy, and it has to be the money that drives the economy. The assumption in the economy is that we make decisions on the basis of self-interest and greed. That's a problem. And so there's, there's a really big cultural issue, assumptions about who we are and what we're for and what our roles with each other are and what our connections with each other are. On a different level, there's a structural um, there's a couple of ways that it's deeply flawed structurally. One is that the idea of ever-increasing growth is running up against the limits of the earth. I think people know about that pretty well. And the other is that the interest-debt dynamic means that those who have more continue to get more by getting interest from the people who have less who are paying off debts to them. So it's like this inherent pulling apart of of the um, society into the more and more haves and, well, fewer haves with more and a lot of people with less. Integrity means wholeness. So we have to kind of bring the economy and the money and bring our faith and bring them together and think about all the decisions that we make and all the things that we're part of as a faith issue. So think about the testimonies. We value integrity but there's no place for conscience in, an, in our economic system. We value simplicity, but we're told that, that our goal is to, our role is to consume more and more. We value equality, but our economic system kind of is, has a, is driven toward increasing inequality. We value community, but we're act, told to act as individuals and people on the margins are discarded. We value stewardship, yet we're running through the Earth's resources at an alarming rate. We value peace, but the economy is creating more destruction than any war ever has. So it's just, it seems very, very compelling that we have to ask those big questions about our economic system if we're going to be true to our testimonies. We have to think freshly about what really could work. I'm not so interested in labels as, um, as thinking about what a new economic system could really work, work for everybody. We've come to the end of just being able to grow and grow and grow physically, the way children come to the end of their growing, growing, growing physically. So we need to make a shift 
to what is a mature economy? What is an economy that can exist in a steady state? What's a new economy that could work in the current situation that we're in? So we need to look for an economy that can exist within the confines of the world that works for everybody. What an interesting thing to try to figure out. I'm here at the Friends Journal office in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is where Quaker Speak gets edited and published. Just wanted to say thank you for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release a new video every Thursday. And you can click on the button over here to subscribe to the channel. You can support us for as little as $1 per video. That button is just below me. You can see all the videos we've ever released in this playlist down here. Thanks again for watching and have a great Thursday.